What's going on there guys? Good evening. It's the Earth Master here on this beautiful Friday night, September 23rd, 2022. It is about 9.11 p.m. West Coast time out here in California. The latest quake shows a 1.4 earthquake down here in the region of Southern California. Pretty active day. Had quite a bit of movement around the globe, including that large earthquake over here around the northern end of the Java Trench and also a 6.2 down here and well it looks like they downgraded it to 6.1 down here along the Chile area South America region uh, let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here around the region on the flat scale model earth here a little bit of activity here within the last hour outside of Japan a 4.1 this one's pretty deep though starting to notice some uh, deeper trends of earthquakes in certain areas that could be uh, ramping up some further movement up here around the Izu Trench, Japan Trench, and the Kurokam Chaka Trench. So watch that pretty closely. 4.1 at 364 kilometers deep. Uh, just a little bit prior to that, we had a uh, 4.6 into the Japan Trench at 59 kilometers. So watching this area pretty closely. Uh, further up north into the uh, area of the Kurokam Chaka Trench, this earthquake here from uh, late last night time frame. All right, let's see, any aftershock sequences here around the 6.2 area in Indonesia? Nope, not showing up here on the USGS model. Uh, maybe so on the EMSC map. Let's go ahead and uh, see what we got here for the latest activity on the EMSC model. Uh, zooming in here, let me zoom in just a little bit here to this region. And it looks like some threes kicking off here uh, just to the south of the 6.2. Although I can't say that those are aftershocks, kind of looks like m the majority of those were prior to the 6.2. That region uh, is definitely a uh, hazard zone as far as producing large earthquakes. So might want to keep an eye on that area pretty closely there. I've been kind of watching this kick up a couple sixes here over the last month or so. Major player in producing some mega quakes. Uh, let's see, around the uh, Banda Sea, Looking like a couple fours out there throughout the afternoon time frame. As far as the uh, most recent data goes here, looks like um, going to be those two earthquakes over here around Japan. We did see a 4.1 in eastern Afghanistan. Um, but man, things just kind of uh, older. Some older movement down here through the uh, Solomon Islands area, Papua New Guinea. I still think we need to watch this area here around Solomon Islands there for that seismic uh, lack of seismic activity. Let's see what we got uh, on the Big Island here, southeastern region, showing uh, typical movement. And of course, pretty good swarm up here around Mauna Loa. Got about oh, 68 earthquakes or so in the last 24 hours. Uh, been pretty consistent. I don't believe there's been any update on that activity, but you know what? I always like to check. So we're going to go over here to the uh, Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. Just do a quick uh, check here on Mauna Loa, see if there's been any updates as far as that swarming goes. A lot of times they will put out a, um, a little summary on uh, maybe what's going on there. Let's see here. Yes, they did. They actually put one out here uh, today, it looks like, earlier. Friday, September 23rd, uh, a small seismic swarm is ongoing beneath the summit of Mauna Loa Volcano. Uh, let's see, it's recorded over 38 earthquakes beneath the summit. Well, we know that's probably tripled now. Uh, these earthquakes may result from changes in the magma storage system and or may be part of normal readjustments of the volcano due to changing stresses within it. Uh, HVO continues to monitor Hawaiian volcanoes for any changes. According to HVO scientists in charge, uh, Ken Han, seismic activity beneath Mauna Loa has been gradually increasing over the past two months. Small earthquake swarms are considered a normal part of the increase in activity. Currently, there are no indications that magma is moving towards the surface and other monitoring systems are displaying normal behavior. So. Uh, we'll definitely watch that pretty closely, right? Uh, any type of major swarming like that at uh, or in around a volcano is noteworthy to watch. 
one thing we want to look for is the inconsistencies here of the uh, the depth of these earthquakes. Right now, most of them are between uh, looks like negative uh, one, negative one point six. But sometimes when we see these uh, deeper earthquakes down there, uh, it could be a, a telling sign of a uh, some magma on the rise. So we'll watch that. Right now, though, it's pretty stable as far as the uh, um, the amount of earthquakes in one certain area. Very shallow up top here. But uh, we'll watch and keep note. If there is any further deep earthquakes, we'll definitely uh, keep uh, keep an eye on it for sure. That's for Mauna Loa out there on the Big Island. 6.2 down here along the Chile area, or 6.1. They originally had it at 6.2. Uh, this is the area, I believe that's seen the, uh, ooh, the large earthquake back in 19, uh, early 1960 something, right? Let's just do a, uh, let's do a little quick search here real quick. And we're going to go back here and look out, look at the amount of earthquakes here in this region. We're going to go 8.0 and above. And we're going to set this back. I just want to see if there's any seismic gaps out here. Uh, we're going to go back since about, uh, hey, 1400, right? Doesn't really go back that far, but I kind of like to put it in there. Let's go ahead and draw a rectangle on the map here throughout the uh, Chile area. And we're just basically concerned about the area where we're seeing um, the activity right now, which covers right about there. So we'll see what we got here for this region. And so let's, oops, let me go back here. Let me go back one second. This is where the 6.1 struck, right about here around this, this bay area. Doesn't look like um, there's been too much in terms of 8.0 and above south of here. Now, I know the uh, slip rate is a little bit less compared to up north here along the uh, center, uh, center portion of the Peru Chile Trench. But that 9.5 back in 1960, okay, I was... I was uh, I knew it was somewhere back there. Uh, struck up. It looks like a little bit north of where we're seeing that 6.2 today. But uh, that we haven't really... Um, we haven't really seen any large mega quakes here on this area of the uh, Peru Chile Trench in a while. Uh, looks like the last one was back in, well, 2010. That's somewhat recent, but that's kind of up north here. Um, I think it's possible we could still see some eights here in this region, but 9.5 back in 1960, wow. And then, uh, yeah, that's right, they had an 8.1 the day prior, and then uh, the following day, a 9.5. So you can never really know if, uh, you know, it's a foreshock or not. One would think an 8.1, okay, that's the main quake. Nope. Uh, a 9.5 did some devastating stuff sent a uh, pretty large tsunami across the Pacific and um, again this area on the map just north of our 6.1 that we've seen today as far as historical data goes looking at this area definitely quite a bit far as um, some smaller quakes go I don't think we've uh, obviously we haven't seen any eights in this area but uh, Definitely something to watch pretty closely. Quite a few fours and fives and sixes and whatnot. But uh, and then of course as you go up north here, things get a little bit more intense along the trench area. All right, uh, let's go ahead and move on past here. See what we got around the Puerto Rico area. Uh, getting a little activity out here around the U.S. Virgin Islands area. 3.1 coming in within the last hour. Uh, aside from that, most of the activity pretty quiet there around the southwestern edge of Puerto Rico. Um, let's see what we got here in, in the rest of the Peru Chile Trench. Um, looks like we had one more earthquake um, following that 6.1, but much further upstream uh, towards the Ecuador area, 38 kilometers deep. Haven't really seen um, too much more aftershock activity here along the Mexico region. Did have a 5.2 within the last 24 hours. And I'm sure some smaller quakes in there as well, but uh, no major um, further aftershock activity yet. 
Uh, and same for the west coast here. We really haven't noticed too much of an increase in movement. Uh, we got one earthquake out here around the Elsinore Fault System. A little 1.3. But aside from that, California seems to be immune from large earthquakes. But uh, definitely don't let the quietness fool you. Uh, it's just a matter of time before this breaks loose. And remember, the longer, the longer we don't have any sufficient release of pressure here along the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault or any of these other locked zones, that includes the Cascadia, uh, that, that only means one thing, the bigger it's going to be once it does decide to go. Uh, Sierra Nevada, some spotty activity up there through the region, also western Nevada. Uh, into the Pacific Northwest, got a little activity outside of Olympia, it looks like, a little 1.3, but no major movement. Some some uh, small seismic or uh, microquakes here at Mount Rainier. I've seen the USGS installed some new um, seismograph stations up there. I'm kind of curious to see if we can access them through the PNSN network. Let's go ahead and check it out. And by the way, Cascadia Trimmer, uh, again, confined to the uh, Oregon area. It's about the center portion south central portion of the Cascadia subduction zone 110 epicenters over the last 24 hours all right Mount Rainier we'll go ahead and zoom in I don't see any listed up here um, and then again maybe they've uh, I'll have to look into that and see exactly where it was Let's see what this one is these are all seismograph stations there in in the uh, triangles and uh, this one looks pretty functionable. Uh, a couple small earthquakes there. You guys can see that. A couple little spikes there. There's actually quite a few on this station. This one, image not found. All right. Let's see what else we got. Maybe one of these other um, monitoring stations here around Camp Mirror, it looks like. Uh, a couple little spikes bikes over here on this one as well I'm kind of seeing what's going on in the daytime but man this is just <laughs> it's not properly tuned there it's not showing anything so I'm not for sure what's going on there but uh, definitely not correct but either way they are listing a couple of these small earthquakes um, up there at the summit Let's see if we can check out this short period station Some of these, uh, it's hard, really hard to tell on that map. Looks like some interference going on there. Something coming on. See that? See that uh, signature? About every, almost every 18 hours or so, something, some outside interference is coming on and uh, interfering with the uh, seismograph stations there. So, I'll uh, I'll report back on that and see if I can't find those uh, newly installed ones. Yellowstone National Park, this warming up here is kind of coming to an end. Um, yeah, a couple more microquakes here within the last few hours, but as uh, far as the intense warming goes that we've been seeing that over the past couple weeks, uh, just kind of mellowing out a little bit. But uh, still continued, just not as intense today as we had seen uh, in days past. Uh, let's see what else we got. rest of the country looks pretty quiet. A little bit of movement outside of the Pecos, Texas and Oklahoma area up here in Alaska. Uh, looks like a, a typical day. Some movement way up north, northern Alaska. 2.3 coming in. Pretty shallow. Uh, looks like around the Purcell Mountains area. All right. Space weather activity tonight. Um, go ahead and check this out from the Solar Ham. .net website, pretty cool site to monitor uh, solar weather. There's many different sites to use, but uh, including spaceweatherlive.com, I like to use them on occasion as well. But uh, this is here, pretty simple layout and, and gives me what I need uh, for the updates. Uh, all their information, of course, comes from the, um, the uh, professional sites there from the SDO. All right, coronal, uh, coronal hole activity. Yes, there is one down here on the southern uh, hemisphere of the sun, but that is not facing, oh, it's facing us, but I don't believe this is going to give us any type of uh, uh, solar weather activity due to its location there on the southern part of the sun. Uh, we do have another one, center disk, that will be rotating in the view that will provide us, uh, pitting this holds up, uh, it may grow a little bit, 
uh, as that rotates into view in the earth view uh, that should amplify some uh, conditions here uh, in the coming days what do we have an almost look, look like an eclipse here see that an eclipse of the Sun on that uh, little angle that's pretty cool uh, all right we got a little bit of flaring popping off there it looks like see that from that sunspot way over there on the uh, northeast northeastern limb Let's see what we got <clears throat> Uh, we did have a, a low-grade M flare earlier today, uh, kind of crackling here with some C flares currently, uh, and I'm sure the majority of that activity is coming from this far side sunspot, which is uh, named 3110. It's going to be this one over here. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little sunspot, but uh, getting a little dynamic field uh, growth there, and uh, see how that develops over the uh, over the next 24 hours or so. Um, looks like 99% uh, 99 chance of C flare, 30% chance for an M flare, 5% chance for an X flare, and proton event around the 5% level possibility. Um, some of these other sunspots that are facing us do not look all that uh, complex currently. What we look for is a lot of these uh, uh, magnetic fields growing together, but also close uh, as far as the, the colors go. And uh, we'll have to explain all that in detail uh, in a future update. Just got to remind me. And uh, it might be kind of a cool little deal to announce and, and, and uh, kind of study on the update in the near future. Um, let's see here. Looks like there's a little bit of auroras kicking up here at the uh, higher latitudes, the polar regions. And um, I don't believe, well, these guys still have that up here. Looks like it may have been running late as far as that uh, potential CME from a couple days ago. Current, uh, current space weather data, a little bit of speed uptick, den uh, uptick, density not so much, but uh, looking at a little bit of uh, separation here of the BZ. Um, interplanetary magnetic field that could be allowing some uh, some solar wind in from the south it looks like as far as a detailed forecast goes uh, and again this is a what is this September 24th UTC time between zero and uh, that would be right now technically we only have like an hour and a half left of that window so uh, maybe that's running a little bit late Looks like over the next couple nights here, or uh, yeah, yeah, maybe next tonight and maybe tomorrow night we could see a little bit of elevated conditions, but nothing spectacular, nothing uh, that I would be uh, concerned about. Uh, earthquakes Canada up to the north, not a whole lot going on. Just that one earthquake here from uh, I believe this is yesterday or day before. Uh, up there, way up there, a little 2.6. Aside from that, things pretty mellow and quiet across the board. Alrighty, guys, I'm gonna jump off here and um, enjoy the rest of the evening. Keep an eye on a couple areas here. Have a good night. We'll catch you guys uh, tomorrow sometime. Peace out, everyone.